Wow, that... Okay, well, this item is quite large, so, um... I don't know if I'll be able to show as much of its features without it being very clunky in this video. But I will try my best, of course. Anyways, this is a Kodak EK160EF that I found when I went on a holiday to Cahir Syveen in Curry. They had the bag, in a, it was in a second hand shop, and the second hand shop just so happened to be right next to the hostel in which I was sleeping. They had the bag in the handbag section, and I just thought it was another handbag, but it looked kind of old, so I picked it up, and yeah, it turned out to be a Kodak. This camera is from 1979. As far as I know, the EK part in its name means extra light, and the EF means electronic flash. Um, as it says up here and it is one of the most 70s looking things I possibly have ever seen just look at this font like seriously rainbow it has like the line font then this thing up here is very 70s this rainbow looking arrow there is just so 70s I mean everything about it you couldn't mistake the decade for sure it was pretty much complete as far as I know, I don't think it was missing anything when I got it. Anyways, I'll try to show as much of it as I can. Um, I am afraid that at some point something might fall, something might break, something might... Just because of its size. I should probably start off with the actual camera. And now there is nothing to support the camera but my hand, so this is where I'm afraid that something might fall or something might get knocked. So this is the actual camera itself from the front. Here it is from the back. By the way, I don't think you can ever use this camera in the modern day. I don't think they still make the film cartridges for it, which is a small shame. Here, I'll just move my microphone closer in case it's not picking it up. Which is a small shame, but uh, my particular one, um, I am missing a negative connection, negative terminal for one of the batteries, so I can't ever use it. But yes, my battery compartment is also slightly corroded. I mean, not too badly, but just slightly corroded. Uh, you can actually remove this rubber piece that's around the viewfinder there. There's this plastic piece here, as you can see true, which will tell you how much film you still have in the cartridge. But obviously... Oh no, that's... Yeah, the plastic piece for the film is there. That piece up here is actually for the flash. I got that mixed up. So um, how you activate your flash, you just pull it out like that. And then that will charge up the flash for you. My dog is barking at something. I hope that that doesn't get picked up. It says on the flash, close flash between pictures to increase battery life. And then it tells you the flash range. It's quite stiff actually. So you can hold this camera like that or like this to take pictures. They even advertise that in the manual. The actual trigger for it is there, you press that down. You can darken or lighten the exposure of the film. I just keep that in the middle to make it symmetrical. And the actual film itself, if I could open this, might be a bit, there we go, is stored in this, which you just pull down this piece of metal to let out the cartridge. And here is what the cartridges look like. This one, as you can see, is empty, of course. It says Kodak on it, it has a Kodak logo. There. And this orange stripe there is to let you know where to put it in, because there's an orange stripe here as well. So that way, you just line up the orange stripe and put it in. 
course there's the rollers I've already washed them now I should probably show the instruction manual like I said this camera was quite complete so here's the actual instruction manual it has a bunch of people who are very happy about their Kodak um, the front of it's slightly discolored but the back of it's alright it's just the same picture so in the manual it just explains how you use it and um, there's this page here that's the page I was talking about so you see she's holding the camera just the regular way and the next one she's holding it the horizontal way there um, it says Eastman Kodak Company copyright 1979 it has multiple different languages of course and it is a pretty cool instruction manual now I should show the actual case for it this is going to be slightly difficult it's just a black bag I don't think that's real leather anyway it has this strap which you can adjust it has this zip which has a ring around it maybe you could attach stuff to that if you wanted to and it has this compartment here which I would imagine you could use for storing extra film cartridges the actual inside of it is just like a red velvety type material whilst I have the opportunity to a while ago I showed a Sankyo movie mat camera I only had the camera now I have the case and oh these zips are very stiff this camera is from 1962 and so is the case so um, a lot of it has just disintegrated there's there used to be sponge inside but the sponge has just turned to dust I got the instruction manual as well and in this instruction manual uh, where's the page there's a bunch of really happy Japanese people they're like so amazed at their camera There's a bunch of really nice photographs in this, like that one. I really like this one. I have a book from Japan, actually, that has airplanes in it. And I might as well show that. That's actually from 1979 as well. See? Anyways, I didn't, I didn't really want to make a separate video just showing the bag and instruction manual, so I think I'll just show it in this video as well. Um, I think that's enough for this video anyway it's gone on for eight minutes I've shown two items so far um, I also I was thinking of since I got a big box of die cast instead of actually showing all of the die cast that I got I was just going to show the most interesting ones you know like the obscure ones um, ones from Spain like Geis Val ones from Hong Kong, ones that people don't really know about, you know, everyone knows Matchbox, everyone knows Hot Wheels, everyone knows Majorette, everyone knows Dinky and Corgi, just the interesting ones, like the FC and things like that. Because if I was to show everything, the video would be way too long. And I would have to say as much information as I know about it, so. Another thing I have to show, um, I'm not sure if I ever mentioned it before, but I have a ZX Spectrum, Sinclair ZX Spectrum personal computer from 1983 that uh, needs repairing, and I've been waiting for it to get repaired to show, to make a video about it. But I also got a Commodore 64 that is in working order, and the Commodore 64 has um, the data set as well, and I'll have to show that in, at some point. Um, I'm still going to have to show everything that I've gotten recently, like the other item I got from Carus Iveen was a 1970s headset, which is really, really cool, like, it's very high quality and it just feels nice to wear and the audio through it is very good. Uh, I'm just trying to think of other stuff I have to show, I have a lot of stuff to show. 
the last video I made about the um, answering machine. I hope that that gets a bunch of views because that answering machine is just really cool. It's so 80s. Uh, another thing I have actually, I'm not sure if I should make a video about this or not because it's not really my channel. I mean, my channel is Otter's Vintage All Sorts, so I can do whatever old item I want. But, um, I really don't know if I should make a video about this item. Um, I'll just have to reach it. I hope I can reach it, at least. I got this thing just yesterday. It looks like it's from the 80s. I can't find much information about it on the internet. It's an RC car. Um, it says great power made in China on the bottom of it. It takes four AA batteries. It has steering and uh, it has a made up brand name on it that definitely is not to be confused with any real brand names. It's a completely original thing. They definitely didn't just copy or make a knockoff of an already existing brand. It's completely original and uh, it is their own uh, intellectual property. You can't claim it. If I find more information about this thing or more parts for it, I don't actually have the remote for it. I will make a video about it, but uh, for now I don't think I'll make a separate video about it. I really think it's cool though, even though it is only um, cheap, not very high quality. Another thing I don't understand about it, it has a spring there on the wheel. Anyways, I've gone completely off topic. I've started showing another item that had nothing to do with it. I've shown two items that had nothing to do with this planned video at least. Uh, so I should just end it here before I start showing my whole collection.